In today's video, we're going to be talking about the second generation antidepressants as first line treatment for major depressive disorder. We're going to be talking about the pros and the cons of these medications, so stay tuned. Now, psychotherapies are also used as first line treatment, and we'll be discussing those in our next video, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out. And don't forget to hit that like button if you find this video useful. Now, we're going to jump right into it. First, there are some things to consider when talking about medications in general. Everyone responds differently to medications and there are many factors that affect this. It is extremely rare for a person to have all the side effects that are listed for a medication and many people will have few if any of the side effects that we'll discuss. If you are on one of these medications and are experiencing a side effect, call your provider so that you can discuss your options. Do not abruptly stop taking your medications, as this can have negative effects and you may even experience some withdrawal effects. So that's why it's important to speak to your healthcare provider so that you guys together can determine what would be the safest approach for you. So the first class of the second generation antidepressants that we're going to talk about are the SSRIs, and that stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, which basically means that they increase the serotonin levels in our brain, and that's how they help boost our mood and help combat depression. The most common medications you'll see in this class prescribed as first-line treatment are going to be Citalopram or Selexa, Escitalopram or Lexapro, Fluoxetine or Prozac, Paroxetine or Paxil, and Sertraline or Zoloft. The pros of SSRIs are that they have been around for a long time, and there are many studies that prove their efficacy or prove that they actually work. So by taking these medications, most likely they're going to have a positive effect on your symptoms of depression. And they are generally well tolerated. In fact, Sertraline and Escitalopram are used more commonly in the elderly because they're very well tolerated and the side effects are actually less with those medications. Plus, the only two FDA approved antidepressants for treating depression in children are SSRIs, fluoxetine or Prozac and escitalopram or Lexapro. Fluoxetine is approved for ages eight and older and escitalopram is approved for 12 and older. However, you will see experienced child psychiatrists and child psychiatric nurse practitioners utilizing different medications off-label to treat depression in children with positive results. And with children, actually, first-line treatment is psychotherapies, and we'll be discussing psychotherapies like I mentioned before in our next video, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video while you're at it. Though SSRIs are well tolerated, like with all medications, there are side effects, and the most common side effects are going to be the stomach upset and nausea. Now, this is very common when you first start taking an SSRI or any antidepressant for that matter, because we have serotonin in our gut. And as serotonin levels are being increased, it's stimulating the serotonin in our stomach, which causes that nausea. The great news is, is that it will pass after a few doses and can be alleviated if you take the medication with food. So if you can ride it out for a few days, you'll do very well. And that's actually a sign that the medication is working. Other side effects you may see are vomiting, diarrhea, headache, drowsiness, dry mouth, dizziness, and some SSRIs like fluoxetine may cause insomnia, so you'll take that in the morning, while others like paroxetine may cause drowsiness, so you just take it at night. Now, the most common side effect besides nausea is lack of sexual desire or decreased libido, and this may happen to roughly 50% of people on SSRIs, which may make them intolerable for some people. However, there are other medications or treatments you can try to combat the side effect. So if you are experiencing this, talk with your provider about it because they can help you with it. Also, keep in mind 
that decreased sexual desire is a symptom of depression. And many times taking these medications will alleviate that. And if you have been on an SSRI for a while that has worked really well and then developed decreased libido later on, then it might be a sign that your depression is returning and medication is no longer working. So your provider may need to increase the dose or change the medication altogether. The next class are the SNRIs, the serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. And these medications target both serotonin and norepinephrine, and that's how they boost mood in our brain. The most commonly prescribed are densvenlafaxine or Pristique, duloxetine or Cymbalta, and venlafaxine or Effexor. The pros with SNRIs are that they help alleviate chronic pain in those patients with chronic pain and depression. So they help alleviate pain associated with nerves like fibromyalgia or neuropathy. Also, SNRIs have an energizing effect, meaning if you have that type of depression where you have a lot of fatigue, you're sleeping all the time, you have slowed movements, and it's hard for you to go about your day, then the SNRIs may be right for you. With desvenlafaxine or Pristique in particular, this medication has been shown to have procognitive effects in older people with pseudo-dementia or cognitive impairments due to depression. However, of course, they come with side effects. And though lack of desire is reported as a side effect of the SNRIs, there's a less occurrence of the decreased libido and the decreased sexual desire. So a lot of times if someone starts on an SSRI and they have that side effect, then they will change to an SNRI. Also, similar to the SSRIs, you're going to have that stomach discomfort, headache and dry mouth along with insomnia. So you take these medications during the day as opposed to taking them at night. However, it also comes with an added effect of nervousness, anxiety, or mild tremor for some people, and that's because it's increasing that norepinephrine. So this is a sign the medication is working, and oftentimes this symptom will go away after a couple of weeks. Other side effects reported include decreased appetite, which may not be a bad thing if you're trying to lose weight, and constipation. Also, if someone has high blood pressure, these medications are used with caution because they can elevate your blood pressure, and so that is something that your mental health care provider will be looking at when deciding whether or not to choose this medication for you. These next few medications, we'll call them the atypical antidepressants because they work very differently from the SSRIs and SNRIs. The first one we're going to talk about is bupropion or Wellbutrin. And bupropion is considered a noradrenaline and dopamine reuptake inhibitor or NDRI. So it's mainly targeting norepinephrine and dopamine. The pros for bupropion are that it can be used to treat sexual dysfunction caused by another antidepressant. So if you have an SSRI that's working really well for you, but you develop that side effect of lack of sexual desire, a very small dose of bupropion can actually do the trick for you. Another pro is that it's also energizing, just like the SNRIs. Also, if you're overweight, it decreases your appetite and does help promote weight loss. Another pro with bupropion is that it reduces cravings for cigarettes and is also marketed under the name Zyban that's used to help people quit smoking. The side effects for bupropion include loss of appetite, weight loss, dry mouth, constipation, dizziness, headaches, anxiety, tremor, sweating, and high blood pressure. The next medication is bordeoxetine or Trintelix. 
And this is classified as a multimodal antidepressant, meaning it works in many different ways to increase many different neurotransmitters to help boost our mood, such as serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, glutamate, acetylcholine, and histamine. The pros of vortioxetine are that it has that procognitive effect similar to desvenlafaxine, and so this too has been shown to work really well in the elderly who have depression and that pseudo-dementia. Weight changes are also uncommon, so you're not going to gain or lose weight on this medication, and that's seen as a plus. Now, of course, there are side effects, so very similar to SSRIs, you're going to have that stomach discomfort, and a lot of the side effects similar to SSRIs, including sexual side effects. However, these side effects with this medication are not as common as with the SSRIs, and you won't have the diarrhea with this medication, but instead you may have constipation. Finally, the last medication we'll cover is mirtazapine or Remeron. And this is a noradrenergic antagonist, specific serotonin antagonist. And basically, it just increases the effects of norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine. The major pro with this medication is that it really helps patients who have insomnia and depression. So this medication is specifically taken at night because it is very sedating and that is one of the common side effects, but it's a desired side effect if you have depression with insomnia. The downside is that it increases appetite significantly and with increased appetite comes weight gain. However, I'd like to emphasize that none of these medications come with calories packed in them. And how these medications cause weight gain is the fact that they increase your appetite. So when a medication says that it can cause weight gain, most of the time it's because it's increasing your appetite or increasing your cravings. So you have to be very cognizant about what you're eating and be mindful about the things that you're eating and try to set some dietary restrictions for yourself if you see that you're reaching for more junk foods or carbohydrates and things like that. Along with the weight gain, other side effects common to mirtazapine are going to be dry mouth, dizziness, and low blood pressure. So, those are the first-line treatments you'll see used for depression. Are you taking any of these medications or something different and want to share your experience or have questions? Then leave them in the comment section below and we'll do our best to help answer it. Moving on, in this last segment, we're going to focus on the dangerous but rare side effects of antidepressants that you need to be aware of. Now, some of the rare and dangerous side effects to note with any antidepressant is going to be number one, the activation of suicidal thoughts. And this is actually a black box warning that you'll see on all antidepressants. This is actually more common in youth under 21 years of age, but this can happen at any age. So we always warn our patients about this side effect because it can lead to death. And if you or someone you know has suicidal thoughts, then please get them the help they need. Call 911, get them to the emergency room or call the National Suicide Hotline. The next rare and dangerous side effect is serotonin syndrome, and this is basically just having too much serotonin. And a person with serotonin syndrome will have a rapid heart rate, high blood pressure, sweating profusely, profuse diarrhea, and they may even become confused, agitated, restless, have loss of muscle coordination or twitching of the muscles, or even muscle rigidity with dilated pupils. And this is actually a medical emergency. So if you are one in a few who are taking an antidepressant and experiencing these symptoms, then go to the emergency room right away. The next rare and dangerous side effect is hyponatremia, which is low sodium levels in your blood. And if this will happen, it will typically occur with the SSRIs and SNRIs. And low sodium level symptoms to watch out for would be muscle cramps, muscle weakness, confusion, lethargy, and seizures, which would be a very severe form of low sodium level. So if you are having any of these side effects, you definitely want to speak with your doctor or provider right away. 
The next rare and dangerous side effect to be aware of are seizures. And seizures can occur with any antidepressant, but they're less rare with bupropion or Welbutrin. And therefore, it's actually contraindicated if you have a seizure disorder or history of seizures that you take bupropion because of that. So if you have a seizure and you're on an antidepressant, that's something you definitely want to get medical attention for and you'll probably have to have your medication changed. The last rare and dangerous side effect that we're going to talk about is induction of mania. And when I say mania, we're talking about a bipolar mania. So those with bipolar will usually come for treatment because they're feeling depressed. And if your provider doesn't really go into your history really well and find out that actually you've had some symptoms of mania in the past, then they may not uncover the fact that you actually have bipolar versus depression. And when you're put on an antidepressant and you have bipolar, it can induce mania. So symptoms of mania or manic symptoms are going to be that you're not sleeping much at all, maybe just two or four hours a night, but you still have a lot of energy and you feel like you can conquer the world. You start doing and taking part in risky behavior, such as going on shopping sprees when you don't have a lot of money or gambling or going out and partying, drinking too much with your friends. You may also have rapid speech, inflated self-esteem, and this may even get to a point where you also become grandiose and delusional, like you think that you're God or like you're the Virgin Mary and a gift to all of creation and things like that. So this of course is an emergency because the person will need treatment for the manic symptoms. So if someone is on an antidepressant and starts having manic symptoms, they need to see a provider right away. So some takeaways to remember, first of all, everyone's going to tolerate these medications differently. And most likely you're not going to experience every single side effect of these medications. Like I said, the most common one that most everyone experiences is going to be a little slight nausea or stomach discomfort. And that's because the medication is working, but it subsides after a few days. You may also note that some medications are going to be better for you than others. And it's not going to be the same for everyone. Again, everyone is different. So that's why it's important to talk with your healthcare provider so that you can make that decision on which medications are going to be right for you. So these are the medications that are used as first line treatment for major depressive disorder. And we hope that you found this video useful in helping you to make a level-headed, sensible decision on whether or not medications are the right choice for you. And if you find that they are, have the conversation with your mental health care provider. Also, if you found this video useful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you can stay level-headed in making your decisions on your mental health care. And if you have any questions about this video or any mental health topics that you would like us to cover, please put them in the comment section below. We thank you for watching and hope that you have a great day.